This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. It's a free call, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. We're glad you're with us, America. 888-825-5225. Esmeralda starts off this hour in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Esmeralda. How are you? Hey, good, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? (laughs) Hi. So I'm in a brand new relationship. We are in the getting to know you phase, but I'm already very fond of this man, and I care very much about uh, him and his young girls. Um, I've told him I'm following the baby steps, but um, he's heard good things. He's not familiar, and he's currently playing the 0% credit card game. Now, I have thoughts out, like I could just go, but I have been restraining myself, okay? (laughs) And I'm just asking for your guidance on how do I coach or guide him in a gentle way to not step on the toes of this brand new relationship, but also start to try to teach him about what's helped me. And I'm on baby step four. Yeah. Uh, you don't talk to him about his stuff. You talk to him about your stuff. Just tell your story. Just tell your story a lot. And it is, um, it's your story. And, you know, my story was that I did this and this and this, and it didn't work. And I used to screw around with credit cards all the time, and they didn't end up being a blessing to me. And I decided that what I wanted was the peaceful, easy feeling, to quote the Eagles, right, of uh, being mm-hmm. debt-free, right? I, I, you know, I just, I, and so I've been working to get out of debt. And, you know, I told you a little bit about that. And, and I got to tell you, it's something that's kind of central to what I'm doing right now. And I'm really excited about it. And so it means a lot to me. And I'm getting out of debt, and, and the feeling is amazing. I, the empowerment that I've got is amazing. And just tell your story. Does, if that isn't your story, then change it and make it your story. But, I mean, I was just trying to superimpose my, my verbiage over you in that situation. You follow me? Yes, sir. That, and that is my story. And I want, it's like I want that for him, too, but you're right. Okay, I'll focus yeah. on me. He'll, he'll, he'll come around. He'll come around. And, and, you know, there's other things in the relationship that you're going to get have serious discussions about as the relationship goes through its various phases. I mean, you're going to have a lot of discussions, if you're smart, uh, uh, about parenting and about what being in those little girls' life means if you're going to be there, mm-hmm. what role you're going to play. You know, you're going to want to find out um, that, that uh, if, um, if one of them tattles on you if you're in trouble— Meaning that if meaning that they they hold too high a seat in the household in the event you're there, um, mm-hmm. you know you're gonna want to you're gonna want to get that positioning straightened out at some point. Agreed. And I've got one of my own. Oh well, there you go. And how are we gonna how are we gonna do the Brady Bunch? You, you know, you do the mix here, right? You know, that's a compli- it's, a, it's a complicated process, and so yes. those discussions are very serious and very heartfelt and um, mean a lot to both of you. And so does the discussion around money, and so does the discussion around religion, and so does the discussion around in laws that are crazy, and what are we gonna do with them? And, you know, because everybody's got one. And, you know, what, what's the discussion? So it, it's kids, money, in-laws, and religion are the four big things that break marriages up. Mm-hmm. And if you can have good, solid, in-depth discussions prior to marriage about all four and be on the same page about all four, you have a very high statistical probability of winning with, with your marriage. And money's just one of them. You know, so that, that's good. You know, you, so you're, you're just as this as but in, no more would you get involved in a deep parenting discussion than you would a deep money discussion at at the early stages of a relationship. But somewhere up in there, when things are getting serious, you definitely will. Right. Yes. Yes. You know, yeah. And so I at really, some point, you I, are going to have to draw, throw out there, you know, you're a little further down the road, probably. But. This means so much to me that it's like a deal breaker if we can't be on the same page about money. And it would be because I can't 
I can't go back. And there you go. I don't want him to struggle either because I care too much, you know. No, so it's I not. It, yeah. I, I don't want to attach myself to a sinking ship. That too. Yeah. You know, you've done that before and I won't do that again. And mm-hmm. um, even if it's a really pretty attractive sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks, Steve. Have fun, kiddo. We appreciate you calling in. Erica is with us in Sacramento. Hey, Erica, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. So um, I have a what would Dave do question. Um, We decided to finally start the baby steps, and we have $31,000 saved up right now that we were planning on putting it towards our $32,000 in credit card debt. But we found out that my husband um, is going to be switching over vehicles for work. Um, Two years ago, we bought a truck for $42,000 that his company has been making the payment every month and paying for gas and mileage. But in four months, they are going to give him a a new truck and they're going to be responsible for paying his gas, mileage, insurance, wear and tear. Wonderful. Um, We... Yeah, we owe $20,000 on that truck. So in four months, we're going to be responsible for that. You have been responsible um, for it all my, along. Yeah. So yeah just, I just gave making, you the money for your responsibility. Exactly. The, yeah, so okay. my, I, I, the way I see it, I have three options. We have three options. Um, I can We can save us $5,000 a month for the next four months, pay the truck off. Or we can sell the truck and make about $3,000 because I have a small little beater car that I drive for 3000 but it needs about $2,000 worth of work. Um, what would you do? Would you sell the truck, pay off the truck? I'd sell, I'd sell both of them beater? and buy you an $8,000 car. Okay. And he's got a truck they're giving him. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'd do. Yeah, for sure. And you got almost okay, enough so money between your car and his truck to do that. You'd only put two thousand out of the thirty one towards it. Mm-hmm. Three and three three out of yours, okay. three above on his truck, right? Yes. And and two out of your savings, and we got an eight thousand dollar car for you. That's a dead gum serious move up for you. Mm-hmm. Because you're driving <laughs> you're is. driving crap, you know? And and we get rid of his twenty thousand dollar truck and he drives the company truck, right? Yes. I love it. All right. Sounds good. Does that work for you? It does. Um, yeah, we just we still have a um, $90,000 HELOC and a $90,000 mortgage. So yeah, well, you're going to track that wondering. HELOC now with the $29,000 that's left over out of the thirty one, right? Yes. And, and, and now you just get roll up your sleeves and get after it. Do that budget thing, that gazelle intense thing that, uh, you know, we're not going to see the inside of a restaurant unless we're working there thing because we're getting out of debt. That's how you decide. This is The Ramsey Show. is full of firsts. As the first and longest serving Christian health cost sharing ministry, CHM has shared medical expenses for its members since 1981. We believe you should have the freedom to focus on your health while being supported by a community of believers, giving you the opportunity to create many more firsts.
Thank you for joining us, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. This is The Ramsey Show, where common sense shows up for your life, your work, your money, your relationships. David is in Houston, Texas. Hi, David. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you very much, uh, Dave. I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. What's up? I'll be, I'll, I'll be brief. Here's my question. My wife and I have really worked hard over the past two years working on paying off our mortgage. Good. We've got 60000 60, left on our mortgage. Wow, you're almost there. All right. I'm, I'm now 59 and a half, and I've got 1.9 by 401k. Should I take the money out and be done with this and pay it off or keep plugging along? Wow. On my mortgage. Look at you. Congratulations, millionaire. Thank you. How much of this did you inherit? Zero. Well, were... well, hang, hang on a minute. My grandmother left me a uh, $50 uh, savings bond, so <laughs> that probably helped me out. You know, what probably helped you out was her character in, in your DNA. I like it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, oh, man. Uh, what's your household income, sir? Um, 260. Cool. What's the house worth? Uh, about 500. Okay. Well, there's certainly nothing wrong with cashing enough out today, mathematically to pay off your house instantaneously. You're debt free. Okay. What'd you say the house is worth? Uh, 500. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So you're worth over $2 million net worth. We know that. So you could do that and it wouldn't, wouldn't even blink. However, you make enough money to knock $60,000 out real fast and allow that money to lay in there and continue to grow tax deferred or tax free. So I'd be tempted to not let the government get their hands on the money. If it was me, uh, just cause you can do it within a year, right? Well, the gold is, uh, July. Yeah. So, I mean, for the difference in the taxes, that you would pay by pulling the money out of the 401k. There's no penalty because you're 59 and a half, but the taxes, I just go ahead and use my income to do it. I'm already paying taxes on it and let's be done by July just for that reason. But there's no wrong answer here. It's just, that's an idea. Yeah. That's what my wife wants to do. Uh, and, but I kind of wanted to be done with it. Start 2022 with fresh Mm -hmm. with, with zero debt. And I said, I'll call Dave and see what he thinks. I'm going to, I'm going to go with your wife because the taxes on the 60 grand are going to be 20 grand in your world and you don't need the money out of the 401k. You're not going to be touching it anyway. You have mandatory withdrawals. If it's traditional that begin at 70 and a half, but but until then you could let that money grow. And instead of giving that $20,000 to the government now, wait 10, 20 years to give it to the government. So I, sure. I, I, I'm with you emotionally. I'd like to be done right now because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a rip the Band-Aid off guy. But, uh, right. but mathematically, it costs you extra 20 grand this year to do it this year if, unless you do it out of your income. And you can be done by July anyway. If it meant six years instead of six months, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But it's six months. It's all in the same tax year even. So, yeah, uh, sorry. I'm going with your wife on this one. But it's. I, let me just tell you, again, neither one of these boxes are in the stupid column. You can check either one of them, and they're both in the smart column. You guys have been amazing. You're heroes. You've, you're everyday baby steps millionaires. You've done the stuff we talk about. Well done. I'm proud of you. All right, Denise is in Indianapolis. Hi, Denise. How are you? I am well. I have a quick question as well. Uh, I have an annuity that I cannot access. Uh, I can't roll it into an IRA. It was um, given to me through a divorce. Um, I have the option of beginning to draw monthly payments as early as age 60. My question is, should I treat this as I would with Social Security and begin the draw as soon as it is available and reinvest it into mutual funds, or should I wait and let it continue to grow? It'll grow faster if you pull it and invest it. It'll grow faster if you pull it and invest it. So are you sure you can't take a lump sum on this and roll it? Uh, I actually worked with a smart investor pro and he said, no, we can't do that. Okay. Because I would think you could move this to a variable annuity from, it's a fixed annuity, right? But is, is it yeah. because of the divorce settlement, uh, documentation or is it just the type of product it is? 
I think it's the type of product. Okay. Well, there's a thing called a variable annuity that's mutual funds inside of an annuity, and you can move from annuity to annuity pretty easily uh, unless you've got severe. How long have you had this other annuity? Uh, about five years. Yeah. You might have a seven years worth of uh, surrender charges in it, and that may be what he's looking at or she's looking at this saying, don't hey, take those surrender charges. Circle back with that Smart Investor Pro again and ask them about moving it to a variable annuity and why that doesn't work. They may be right, but I want to understand why if I'm you. So, rule, you know, my first choice would be move it to a variable annuity and get the whole thing in mutual funds inside of a variable annuity. My second choice would be to take it as quickly as you can, like you said, like Social Security early, and just start moving it monthly, systematically over to good mutual funds that way. So, good question. Thank you for joining us. One week from today, Thursday, January the 13th, is our free, 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 free live stream event called Building Wealth in 2022. The in-person tickets have been sold out for a couple of weeks. Over 1,500 folks are going to join us in the live audience. Over 60,000 are already registered for the live stream. We're thinking we're going to have over 100,000 join us for that on Thursday, January the 13th. It's a big deal. Building Wealth in 2022. Rachel Cruz, George Camel, Ramsey Personalities, best-selling authors, will be with me to talk about how to build wealth this year. We're not only going to talk about what's going on out there in the real world, uh, stuff like uh, nothing down real estate that's happening, NFTs are happening. Uh, man, I'm telling you, there's Bitcoin is happening. There's a lot of things going on out there in the world. And, uh, you know, what is the best way in 2022 for you to build wealth and why? And let's talk about this sanely without all the emotion and without all the name calling and all that. We're going to just show you what it really is. We're going to unpack so you really know what to do. you got to tune in. Join us exactly one week from today, Building Wealth 2022. It is a free live stream, January the 13th. If you want to watch it, you do have to pre-register to watch it. It is free, though. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash wealth, RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number, number one online retailer of custom window coverings, free samples, free shipping, and new promos every month. Great American company, Blinds.com. Always use the promo code Ramsey. Josh is in Georgia. My brother is getting married next year. He asked me to be in the wedding party as a groomsman. Very nice. He's having a destination wedding five hours away. And going would cause me to sacrifice $10,000 in lost wages, $3,000 for a hotel, driving expenses, food, etc. for me and my family. I want to go and show my support, but I don't think it's feasible to lose that much money for a wedding while I'm still in debt with a mortgage and a car payment. Should I be part of the wedding or tell him I can't afford it? Uh... Josh, you're exaggerating. You're going to go for a wedding and you're going to lose $10,000 in lost wages? I'm calling BS. $3,000 for a hotel? Where the flip is this? I'm calling BS. So maybe you just fly in just in time for the wedding and stay one night and you fly right back out and you were there for your brother's wedding, but you couldn't do all of the week long party. That's probably what I'm doing. Yeah. You're exaggerating because you don't like that he's doing this and forcing it on you. I think you can do this very, very inexpensively and it's your brother and you probably should. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades 
shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Show. We talk about your life, your work, your money, your relationships. We're glad you're here. 888-825-5225. Morgan is in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Morgan. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Um, my husband and I both work in a volatile industry. We were introduced to your principles about 18 months ago and immediately went into storm mode. Um, since then, we've saved 50000 and I started a second career. Unfortunately, we found ourselves feeling Dave-ish, wavering in and out of emergency mode uh, as we found success with my second career, using that to pay off some debt, refinance our house, cash flow emergencies, um, and do some home improvements. We still have $65,000 in debt, though, and I'm wondering, you know, can we continue on this path? using my second career um, to, to finish paying off the debt uh, and preserve our 50K we've saved? Or, or is it time to just decide, you know, you're either in storm mode or you're not? And let's How do you done. do home repairs when you're in a sto- storm, home renovations when you're in storm mode? It's, um, illog- it's so illogical. My second income, my second career. I know, but you're in storm mode. You're well, too scared and, and to pay it on the debt, but you're not too scared to fix your kitchen up. I I think I'm more scared to not have money. I have a I still have two careers. You fixed up your kitchen. No, I didn't. I I didn't. Well, what was the home renovation? Well, it was a home improvement. It was a retaining wall. Okay, so why couldn't that wait if you're in storm mode? I, I, that's why I'm calling. Yeah. My point is, is that you're picking and choosing when you decide you want to be afraid or not. I don't want to be afraid when I'm talking about my income from the new career. I don't want to be afraid when I'm talking about doing something I want to do, which is a retaining wall. But when I want to pay off debt, now I want to be afraid. I guess I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to use that savings and then I'm going to lose my You job. used it for a retaining wall. That's my second job, and it's it's, ah, um, it's all your well, income. Well. <laughs> it's all yeah. your income. It's all one pile. There's no bifurcation okay. here. Okay, you, you're not getting it. You are really inconsistent in this, and okay. so well, you yeah. got to decide what you is. You got to decide. Oh. Are you going to keep okay. running this plan, or are you going to say, "All right, the storm mode thing." is not real or it is real. If it is real, it means you don't need to do anything with any money except pile it up. That's okay. that's storm mode, okay? We think we're going to lose our jobs, our careers are volatile, and we're going to be on the street homeless, and we just need to stop and no, no retaining walls, no vacations, no eating out. We're afraid we're going to lose our income. So we're not willing to work a plan until we can get stabilized. We are pushing pause on any progress of any kind anywhere in our life and piling up cash, getting ready for a nuclear winter. That's storm mode. If you're not that scared, then you need to cash all this stinking money out and quit screwing around and get out of debt. Okay. And I think that's uh, how, the, I think that's the how, one you need to do. do. I- is get out of I'm, I'm, how do we know when we're in a volatile industry? How do you know when? How do you feel good about exiting storm mode? Well, there, there's okay. There, there's two kinds of fear here. How long have you been do, do, doing this volatile industry? 
My entire career. For how many years? Um, 15. And how many times have you been without income? Zero. Okay, so the volatile industry thing is a mythology. I hope so. No, honey, it's 15 years, and you've made money every year. It, it you know, you, you're just afraid of the fact it goes up and down, but the actual facts are disputing your feelings. Okay. Aren't they? What am I missing? Um... Uh, I don't know. I just am not confident in my career. I mean, this is the least confident I've ever been. What do you do? I'm an airline pilot. Okay. All right. Uh, well, today they could use your help. <laughs> they can, but I, they also could determine that because I've chosen medical freedom. Yeah, I understand. Um, I understand. That, you, that could I the the you could be put on the street. You could be put on the street. Okay. So until the storm passes, you don't need to do anything else or until you get your income up in another area, which means the storm has passed. You don't need to do anything else. And so um, I don't disagree with your conclusions or your stance or anything else. It's not the point. Uh, but for 15 years, the airline pilots have not been volatile. I mean, it's the ir the income is irregular based on how much you work or don't work, but the chances of you being completely out of work for the last fifteen years is it's higher at this moment than it has ever been, based on your choices. But I mean, airline pilot. Uh, so what? Uh, okay. the The other thing is is that you are an airline pilot. Now, what that means is that you prepare for your job every day against only and are mostly against worst case scenarios right everything you do is to avoid a crash it is in right. your it's in your nature thank god because that's what you're good at right i mean I, I don't really want you flying unless you do that okay so uh, i'm not it's not a criticism but the very the very essence of your job is to constantly prepare for worst case scenarios it's safety safety is the exactly exactly mm -hmm. but that that translates then in your it gets into your nervous system and that translates over to your checkbook and mm -hmm. you go, okay, I'm going to run my finances the way I fly the airplane. I'm going to only prepare for worst case scenarios. And I'm going to pretend like we're about to crash at any moment. And I've really had, got to have thought through every checklist. I've got to thought every backup switch. I got to throw e every scenario. Right. And cause that's what you guys do. I mean, you're really good at it. Thank God. That's why we have very few airline crashes. So, um, you know, you guys, your your profession is amazing, but but the the essence of your profession doesn't help your nervous system adjust to your finances. Your finances are a lot safer than you. You shouldn't run your finances like you fly an airplane. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, does that make sense? It does. So you guys have a lot of money. You've done very well. You're going to be okay. How much notice do you think you'll get? You're not going to get put on the street in 24 hours. You're probably no, going to get um, you're probably going to get six months or ninety days anyway notice on uh, on vaccine, right? Uh, yeah, it's like two two to three months. Yeah. Okay. If that actually happens, let's worry about it then. Okay. In the All mean right, in the meantime, because let, let me just say, say it this way, okay? Let's pretend that that you had no money because you put it all on the debt when you get off the phone here. This is a great conversation, by the way. Thank you for calling. I love Terrifying. it. Terrifying. I love it. I love it. Well, I mean, I'm messing with you, cause, but it's it's really a good conversation. So let's pretend you got you had put all the money today on the debt, and you had no cash except a thousand dollars because you're working the baby steps pure. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much debt have you got? About sixty five k. Oh my God! You're almost debt free when we write this check. Then okay. Uh, but let's pretend you're not debt, that you got $15,000 in debt because we wrote 50 towards it today. And you got the call tomorrow, right after you wrote those checks and the money was already out the door, that you got 60 days. If you didn't do anything at all for 60 days except pile up cash, you'd have a really big pile of cash in 60 days, wouldn't you? 
we, we could come up with some, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about you do nothing. No retaining walls, yeah. no going out to eat, no nothing. And you use all three sources of income, and you just do nothing. And you pile up cash because it's an emergency. You'll be okay. You guys, you're you're in good shape. I'd write a check today, and I'd be moving towards debt freedom. I think you're going to be debt free, and I think that's going to change your whole vision on your second career and on how you react to those first career's demands. Thank you for joining us, America. This is The Ramsey Show. We're so glad you're with us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. In America, for the last 24 months, lots of people have lived in such a jacked-up, anxiety-ridden, semi-rage state of mind that to come back down off of all of those hormones and proteins and be calm again is kind of a weird thing. Might be a good New Year's resolution, by the way. Turn off the television, the news channels anyway. Uh, Unplug or largely unplug from social media and back away from the manure. If you're pouring that much manure into your brain, your brain is going to turn into manure. I knew I had a problem when I actually violated one of my lifelong rules. One of my rules is don't ever read the comments after any article. If you want to know why some species eat their young, you can tell by reading the comments after the articles. These are some of the dumbest human beings on the planet. And some of the meanest, too. Any article on anything. And I I knew it was time for me to just back away from the screen. Because you get in jacked up mode. Because here's the thing. Dr. Deloney talks about this all the time. Facts are your friends. And when your brain is jacked up like that on fear and rage, you've been doing all the, the COVID fear porn Over and over, death, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die. And your brain gets jacked up to the point that your critical thinking skills just disappear. None of us do good, critical, long-term thinking when we are really angry or really afraid. Your brain doesn't work that way. If you're standing near the street and a car at 60 miles an hour swerves towards you, your brain is designed to scream at you, get out of the way, not to analyze the possible impact of a 2019 Escalade on my hip. You don't have time to do all of these discussions in your head. Just move. Your brain is primitive and is designed to throw you out of the way of danger, not to have a critical thinking discussion about it or what I should have said in that argument. Get out of the way. And so your brain shuts down its ability to do critical thinking when you're freaked out. And when you're in trauma like that, Deloney teaches us, and it's been a really good lesson, I've enjoyed learning it myself, that we When we're in trauma like that, we have to force ourselves into higher thinking. We have to say, facts are my friends. What are the facts? What's really happening? What do you see with your eyes? Do you see people falling down dead all around you? What are you really seeing with your eyes? What is the actual facts? 
Not what someone says is science, not what someone says is their political stance on something. What are the actual facts? Now, when those occur, then you will act on those. But until then, you need to get about your business of having a life. You need to move on. And you need to put stupid people and stupid processes and stupid conclusions that were emotion-based in your rearview mirror. Nothing wrong with emotions until they start running your life. And we've got a whole generation or two that was raised thinking their feelings are valid. Your feelings aren't valid. They're feelings. It's valid to have feelings, but it is not valid to make decisions based on your feelings. That's what children do. Children do what feels good. Adults use higher thinking skills, devise a plan, and follow it. And we follow it based on the facts that we see in front of us. What is the real world? What actually has happened not what someone says might happen, not what someone thinks is going to happen, not what you worry about at 2 o'clock in the morning as your brain dreams up all of these bizarre freaking scenarios about your life. And don't we all do that? We do. Facts are your friends when you're facing this stuff. We t started telling you that with the COVID shutdown and the quarantine almost two years ago we started telling you that you know i had just gotten back from a trip to australia when covid hit and we went into quarantine sharon and i spent a month in australia our first trip over there we loved australia it was fabulous and if you recall the beginning of 2020 there were massive fires in australia if you were to watch the news in america you would have thought the entire continent of australia was on fire we were there a month and had, you know, had did, you know, went to one area where the fires had been. And the, uh, the vegetation was already starting to grow back in those areas. Beautiful green valley, but the fires were real and they were devastating. And I'm not saying they're, they weren't horrible. They were, but they, they did not cover the entire continent of Australia. And we actually had... Several people, of course, this is pre-COVID, right? The early, early, early days of COVID. There were a few people in the uh, airports with masks in those days, but very few. And we had lots of people in Australia tell us, say, hey, would you please tell Americans that the entire continent did not burn down? Because apparently Americans, based on what they saw on Fox and CNN, decided that Australia was a black charred mess not to go. And tourism was way down because of the perception of the fires, not the reality. The reality was a very small percentage of the continent was actually affected. Now, the percentage that was affected was a big problem, and it was devastating. I'm not, I'm not saying that wasn't so. But the difference is, what are the facts versus what you saw on the news? Because what you read in the newspaper if anybody does still do that, what you read on some website and what is the truth is very seldom the same thing. What you see in a news report is so jacked up. We got two, three inches of snow today in Nashville, and you would think, according to the news, that it is 17 feet deep out here. The facts are that people in the South can't drive in the snow, so you probably should stay home. But it's not knee-deep. It's barely over the soles of your shoes. And if you have a four-wheel drive and go slow, you're going to be just fine. And consequently, I've been at work all day. So I'm not, And I'm not shaming you if you're not at work today in Nashville. That's okay. It's, it's fine. I understand. I got a bunch of our folks on our team didn't come in, and I'm not mad at them or anything like that. They, they, if they can't drive in the snow, they shouldn't do it. But if you were to watch the news, is my point, according to the, the, these news, these weather forecasters sound like a beagle chasing a rabbit. Hey, 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 hey. You would think. I have read articles written about Dave Ramsey that I don't even understand. Where, how did you, where did you get that? 
It has nothing to do with anything that is me. Nothing to do. That didn't happen. It just didn't occur. Somebody just made it up. And, you know, it's amazing to me. Okay, so the point is, folks, don't make your financial plan like our last caller in that last segment based on your fears. Fears aren't facts. Analyze the fearful situation and figure out how much of it is actually factual. Use your adult higher thinking skills. Is the, is the snow really 17 feet deep? Is it really? This is the Ramsey Show. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. This is the show, of course, where we talk about your life, your work, your relationships, and your money. Thank you for being with us. Joe is with us. Joe is in Boston, Mass. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. I, uh, I just got married a couple months ago. And, Congratulations. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, and my wife and I, after taxes, we, we make about uh, 56 a year and um, just did the math and, uh, you know, get, trying to get on a budget and get out of debt. And our, our expenses every month come out to about 50, uh, not, uh, not every month, sorry, every year. We, we have about uh, $50,000 a year. So we, we only have a, a $6,000 savings and I, I know we're trying to get out of debt too and um really attack everything so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how much extra uh we need to make you know in a, in a second or, or third job uh you know for for the both of us um as we move forward you know trying to figure out how, how much we need to you know pay off debt and build up the emergency fund how much debt do you have uh it's about thirty thousand. what's it on uh, a car payment and student loans. How much do you owe on the car? About twenty-four. Okay, sell it. We just we just bought it. Uh, Shouldn't two have weeks ago. You make fifty-six thousand dollars a year. You put twenty-five with five thousand dollars into it, a car that's going down in value that you can't afford to pay the payments on. Well, we we make. 80s, but you know, take take home pay is 56, and could pay about 400 a month on the car. Yeah, you shouldn't have bought that car. That was a mistake. <clears throat> yeah, it's the reason your budget's tight. wasn't tight for you, did that? Yeah, five, it's five thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and it's going down in value. Yeah. This wasn't the conversation you wanted to have, is it? <laughs> I, I, I had a feeling it would go this way. Uh, and I, I, knew it was, I knew it was stupid when I bought it. But, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Picking on the newlyweds. Picking on the newlyweds. Well, you can do what you want, man. Uh, but the, 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 you know, you can pick up an extra job. And, and here's the thing. As long as you have vehicles that equal half your annual income or greater you're going to struggle with finance and you guys do because you put her car with your car you're over half your annual income and uh or really really close and uh this was an impulsive i owe myself kind of purchase 
and um, it, it was it was a mistake. So you can fight your way through it if you want to fight your way through it. I don't think it's worth it to fight your way through it. I think it's a stupid car. Get rid of it. But um, but that really shocked your system when I said it out loud. So if you want to fight through it, fight through it. But here's the thing. Get on a written budget and then work like six extra jobs. And, you know, how much do I need to make it uh, my extra job? $24,000 if you're going to keep a stupid car. Uh, because it's got your it's got your finances constipated. That's what it amounts to. You're all blocked up, and that's why you're calling me. You can't breathe, and so that that's what you're looking at now. You know, uh, I I you know it, it, again, if you want to fight through it, you can. It's the slow and the hard way to do it. Um, and if I went through, I think you, so try it for a few months and you may look up in the fall and go, wow, I, this is really a bad thing. I'm not liking this. I think Dave was right. He kind of scared the crap out of me and I'm not sure I like talking to him. I don't even like him that much, but maybe he was right. So, cause our goal here is to make sure that we give you the information, Joe, that's going to do the best for you. Cause we love you and we want you to win. Thank you for calling. Jeff is with us in Austin, Texas. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Hey, Dave. I'm great. Thanks for asking. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Man, I've got a question about uh, retirement investing. My wife and I recently surpassed baby step six. Way to go! Yeah, thank you. And thank you for guiding us through it, too. Um, So we have, I have a 401k, she has a 403b. We're putting 15% into those. I also have a separate IRA. That um, My IRA and my 401k are about equal in money. And now that we're debt-free, um, we're looking at what we're going to invest in. My company also offers a, a uh, 457B mm-hmm. that I've never contributed to, but now that it's you know, end of the year, we were doing investment or uh, benefit elections and all that. And mm-hmm. I see this thing every year, and I don't, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, it's just My defer- question all, is, all 457 yeah. is is deferring compensation. It's deferred comp, and it's okay if you don't have anything else. In your case, what's your household income? Uh, about 180. Way to go, man! Congratulations, and not a payment in the world. No house payment, no nothing, right? That's correct. You're just amazing. Congratulations. Can you, can you see me smiling? Yeah, I can. I can hear it. Way to go. You should be. You, you should be proud. All right. So what I want to do is I want to max out our 403B, max out your 401K, and max out two Roth IRAs, and then let's just move on with life. That's going to make you so stinking rich you're not going to be able to breathe. It's going to be amazing. I'll just max out what we have. Max out, okay. max out, not 15%. Baby step seven is no longer 15%. Baby step seven is take the government's hands off of any money you can by utilizing Roth IRAs, 401ks, and 403bs. You could do the 457. It would be okay, but you're going to be just fine doing that. I probably would start some other investing if I wanted to do something in addition to maxing out all of those. But... You max out all those, put the most you can in her 401k, the most you can in her 403b, and the most you can in two Roth IRAs, and all in good growth stock mutual funds, all growing. You're going to have so much money, it's going to be unbelievable. Very, very well done. Absolutely amazing. That's just so cool. Another another Baby Steps millionaire right there, folks. That's, that's who we're talking to. <sighs> I'm so excited about this new book coming out next week. It's just fun. Just absolute fun. So you can still get it because it doesn't come out until Tuesday. If you jump online right now at RamseySolutions.com for $20, and we'll throw in $150 worth of goodies. So go ahead and get the Baby Steps Millionaire's book. It's the only book I've done in the last eight years, and it may be the last one I do. Who knows? I'm not planning on another one. I wasn't planning on doing this one. But I just felt like I needed to convince you guys again that you can do this stuff because the end game is to become wealthy and outrageously generous. That's end game here with the money thing anyway. And so I'm going to show you how. I'm going to make the case, even to those of you who don't think that Dave knows anything about wealth building, I'm going to make an arithmetic case, for an arithmetic, uh, a mathematical case, let's just do it that way for you, that you can't deny. RamseySolutions.com. Get it.
If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. This is The Ramsey Show. Parker is with us in Houston, Texas. Hey, Parker. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. How are you today? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? So just to give you a bit of context, I'm 22 years old. I'm married. I'm completely debt-free. I have a year left in my master's, and my wife is an accountant right now. About wow. a year ago, I inherited um, about half a million dollars from my grandfather in seven individual stocks. And he was a broker advisor in his career and candidly is uh, pretty obsessed with these stocks and has a pretty tight hand. I just want to honor God with this wealth and wanted to call you to see how financially I can handle this you know, tax-free growth? Is it unwind the positions and putting them in mutual funds? And also relationally, how I could talk to my grandfather about, you know, pulling the money possibly out of these positions that he's invested for me. Wow. What's your master's in? Uh, finance and commercial real estate. Okay. Good for you. Thank you. Okay. So he, you, you didn't inherit them because he didn't pass. That's true. He did. Uh, that's right. He's still alive. So he gave or gifted them to me about a year ago when I turned 21. Wow. What a wonderful gift. It is. Yes, sir. $500,000 worth of stocks and seven stocks. And he's made all his money in this, made the money in these stocks. And so he's very emotionally invested in this process. Yes, sir. He is. And I, I want to honor him. I want to honor the Lord and I want to, you know, manage this well. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, personality wise is, is, um, how's he react when you start talking to him about this? I, so I haven't brought up. No, I'm saying if you did, you know him, what would he, you start talking to him about this. Is he going to be dismissive of you or is he pretty open handed? And once he gave it to you as a gift, he's released it or does he still feel like, you, by God, ought to do it the way he says. I think it's going to be more towards the latter of likely advice on, hey, I think you're making a mistake here, if that if that makes sense, where, you know, I've seen these, been with these stocks for X years, and I know there's, you know, this, that, the other with them, and um, I don't think you should do that, and, and probably more on, on that side of things, if I were to put it. And then if you went ahead and did it, it's going to, he's going to be really upset. I would think so, yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. Well, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Mm -hmm. I kind of put myself, the reason I'm hesitating, I kind of put myself almost in grandpa's shoes for a minute because I am that guy, right? I'm the guy with a lot of opinions and I'm the grandpa. So I I could be on the other side of this and and I might be acting like you're talking about. (laughs) 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 So I'm trying to think through how to act, how to treat this, this character. Oh my gosh. Because I kind of like him. Oh my gosh. Um, Even though I disagree with the technicalities of this. All right. So. Well, I think there's a different conversation that you just have, okay? Mm-hmm. And um, here's the thing. There's a story in the Bible of Nehemiah building the walls, rebuilding the walls uh, around Jerusalem with uh, King Nebuchadnezzar's permission. Mm-hmm. And when he went back to do that, the 
in order to get the help of the people, he didn't go in and announce, da, ta, da, we're all going to get our button gear and rebuild these walls and do a lot of hard work. And, uh, because, you know, he didn't make like a pronouncement. Instead, he just walked around the city oh, for days and days for months saying, did you guys notice the walls are down? You know, when the walls are down, we're susceptible to attack from enemies. You know, when the walls are down, the pride of Jerusalem is taken away. When the walls are down, this is, and he just kept talking about, did y'all notice the walls are down? Here's the bad things that happen when the walls are down. The walls are down. The walls are down. I'm concerned about the walls being down. And pretty soon people started coming up to him, the leaders of the people, and saying, did you know the walls are down? And he went, no, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what I'm saying? And so he, he, he didn't, uh, he, he, he wasn't manipulative, but he uh, drew them into the conversation. And I think that's your only shot here. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise you're going to be an ungrateful little 21-year-old snot, and you don't want right. to be that guy, right? No, sir. No, so sir, not at all. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. You're a wonderful you. young man. And so I would sit down with Grandpa and go, you know what? Here's what I see. I see I just got $500,000. Did you know that this guy gave me $500,000, Grandpa? It's amazing. Did you, this guy, he just gave me $500,000. I mean, did you see him do that? That was pretty amazing. And just let him kind of soak in that a little bit and go, you know, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm new at all this stuff, but grandpa, this, this, uh, the stock thing is not very well diversified from what I've been learning and it scares me and just let him talk about it. And he may get more entrenched in his position when he does that, mm-hmm. but, but he also might uh, you know, come along and, and you know, you just keep t- keep presenting him with the problem. I'd like to talk to you about this, but I don't know how to talk to you about this because I don't want to be ungrateful, and I certainly don't want to harm my relationship, and I also want to honor God, and this mm-hmm. scares me. And I'd like to—I don't know how to talk to you about this because I, I, you got—you're so strong in your opinions, and I—I I, and I—I I, 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 would you teach me how to talk to somebody like you? <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying this kind of a right. you know, and just wear him down over several months every mm-hmm. time you're with him you have these conversations where you're just pulling him into the discussion about how grateful you are and how you want to honor god and how scared you are and how, how this is an intimidating thing because you you're, you're caught between your opinion and and his um and, and your desire to please him because that's exactly where you're mm-hmm. caught, you know, and just say it right. all out loud and let hey, grandpa help me solve this problem. And he may come to the point, he throws up his hand. He goes, Hey, listen, just do whatever you want. This is what I think, but I'll be okay with whatever you want. Cause I love you. And if you mm-hmm. can get him there, then you got him right. That's you, you can do whatever you want to do. Cause that's really what he should have done. One of my things is I, I have a rule. I don't give people money that won't accept my input, but once I've given them the money, I no longer control them. Mm-hmm. That's the line, and that's the line he's crossed here a little bit. I don't like that, but I understand how he did it because I would do that if I hadn't pushed myself to do that because I'm a pretty controlling person anyway. It's my nature, and so I. Uh, that's why I can kind of – trying to back – reverse engineer this a little bit out loud in front of everybody, you and me, right? Because it's a great mm-hmm. conversation. It's a great boundaries, John, Dr. John Deloney conversation. I wish John was with me today to p- chime in on this, but um, – that's probably how I would get at it. And, 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 and just, uh, I don't want to dishonor you, but I also don't want to feel like you gave me something that I can't do what I want to do with. That's kind of weird. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to dishonor God. And I don't want to, I mean, what if these stocks went sideways, grandpa, how bad would you and me and God feel? You know I mean? <laughs> I don't, think, I don't think God would care much, but, <laughs> but, but you know, you, you, these are the kind of things that are just run through my head and just have these, instead of coming in and making pronouncements, like I talked to Dave Ramsey and I'm putting it in mutual funds. It's my money. You gave it to me. You no longer have a say, which is technically accurate, but it's not going to go well. Right. Right. And so I wouldn't do that. Um, and you're going to be okay in seven stocks. So you're not going to lose all your money. You, you know, it is a higher risk portfolio, right? Mm-hmm. And he has to say that if you said it to him, it's a higher risk portfolio and I'm 21 and the risk scares me. I want to, I want to, but I want to honor you and I want to, and yet I want to be a man and have my own opinion. And how do I do all that grandpa? Well, mm-hmm. I, I think you draw him in like that. He's going to start talking against himself before he knows it. 
Um, it's probably what would happen to me. <laughs> hey, man, thanks for the call. You're a neat young guy. What a wonderful opportunity is in front of you. Very cool. This is The Ramsey Show. solutions on the debt free stage vincent is here hey vincent how are you i'm great how are you better than i deserve sir welcome where do you live i live in chicago cool welcome to nashville and showing up here on a snowy day yeah i didn't know you guys get this much uh snow down here we didn't either (laughs) and you can attest to the fact that nobody here knows how to drive in it so (laughs) it's very very interesting the uh Snowmageddon is two and a half inches. So, uh, but there you go. So, welcome, dude. Good to thank, have you. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure to finally meet you. I, I feel like I already know you. From you do. Listening, <laughs> you do. We've been hanging out together for a while. <laughs> so, how much debt have you paid off, Vincent? I've paid off ninety thousand seven hundred forty-three dollars and eighty-two cents. Way to go! How long did that take? Twenty-seven months. Wow! And your range of income during that time? Twenty-five thousand up to one hundred thousand. Whoa, there's a story there. Yep. Okay. So what kind of debt was the 91000 So I, I had uh, 79000 in student loans and eleven on my car. Okay. Very, very good. How old are you? I am I just turned 26 last week. So. Good for you. Thank good you. for you. So what do you do for a living? I'm an accountant. Okay. So what happened from the 25 to 127 months? <laughs> so I started my debt-free journey right before I graduated, um, April of 2019. So oh, okay. Um, it was about four months before I started my full-time job. Um, I had finished up my coursework, finished up my CPA, and I started looking towards the next steps in life and, and addressing all the student loans that I had accrued o- over the years. Sure. Um, and Right in time for COVID. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I was, I was talking with one of my friends, and he told me about the podcast, and, and that's how I kind of got in touch with um, your program, started listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I started my, uh, my debt free journey. Wow. Very cool. So how did you go from 25,000? Cause you were just getting, you were just doing yeah. other jo- odd jobs and then exactly boom, yeah. you got the big accounting job now. <laughs> exactly. So when I was starting, um, I just got a, re- I just got a, um, a job at, at like a local pizza place making yeah. pizzas. Um, yeah. I, I heard on one of the, ep- one of the early episodes that I listened to, you're not going to see the inside of a restaurant unless you work there. So <laughs> I figured I'd, I'd learn how to make, make some pizzas. Very cool. So. Well, you did that in 27 months. That's pretty impressive. Yep. You haven't done much else. Yep. Yeah. And then the other thing that helped was, um, I, I picked up Uber, Uber eats, mm-hmm. um, for, the, for about the last year or so. Um, and then I just, just went crazy with that. So there's such a high demand of, uh, for drivers in mm-hmm. Chicago that I was able to, to kind of, um, increase my income that way as well. Yeah, I bet. I bet you did really well. And now you're done. All done. How's it feel? It feels incredible. Like, like I'm yeah. free. <laughs> so, I mean, you're, you're a guy of singular purpose. When you set on on this, I can just tell by talking to you, looking at you, you just went for it. Yes, sir. There was no real, no real question. You just go in all in. All in, yep. Yeah, we're going to jump in the deep end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good for you. So what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? The key to getting out of debt is, um, everyone says it's it's the budget. If Mm -hmm. you don't get the budget right, nothing else will work. So, um, Why do you think that is? I mean, you're an accountant. (laughs) There's a power to that, and that's why everybody says it. It's true. It's not just cliche, but I mean, as an accounting person, you and our numbers guys, we're geeks, right? So we, we see these numbers all the time. We see things in numbers other people don't see, maybe. There's something powerful about this budget thing. Exactly. Like if, if you don't assign ever, if you don't have a, an assignment for every dollar before the month begins, then 
the ants are going to take it, carry, carry all the dollars off. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like that. The ants are going to, cause I can see it though. Like them carrying a potato chip away. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> exactly. It's like $5 here, $20 here. Um, if, if you don't have that, that plan of what you're going to do with every single dollar, then, um, then, then your financial plan is really not going to work. So, yeah, you're just stuck. Yeah, st- sticking to a plan is is probably the, the well, most. Well, it, it gives you the it gives you the guardrails to stay in, and that way you don't slip off the road accidentally. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Well done, man. Well done. Very well done. This is great. How's it feel? You're done. Feels it feels amazing. Um, I'm uh, I'm honestly like kind of in disbelief. Like it, it's it's it still feels like surreal. Um, just like all, all, like after all of the sacrificing and um, just to finally be done and um, recently got engaged to my fiance Madison. So yay! She, she was, Let's see it, Madison. Let's see the ring. Hold it up. Yay! She, she was my biggest cheerleader along the way, and um, we had definitely a lot of um, date nights in where we just make food at one of our apartments and you know watch a movie. And she's she's always been loving and supportive. So yeah. When's the date? Uh, it's gonna be October. All right, good, very fun. Thank good you. for you, man. Thank you. This is so good. And what does she do for a living? She is also an accountant. Okay, of course, <laughs> of course. So you guys are gonna do extremely well. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah, very, very good. Well, that's the uh, number two uh, uh, career of that we found in the millionaire research of people that become millionaires, accountants. Number one's engineer, number three's teacher. So um, very cool, man. Yeah, I love it. You're awesome, man. Thank You're you. heroes. Thank you. What a great way to start your life. Completely free. Got something to talk about. She's cheering you on. This is everything's on the tri- track. You're just you're, you're amazing. Thank well you. done. You're Appreciate a hero, it. man. Good job. Good job. So, what are your parents? Did you grow up in a family that was responsible like this, and or, or are they looking at you thinking you're crazy? No, uh, absolutely not. Um, they're they're looking at me like I'm crazy. They, they actually had your book. They never read it. Um, but I was I was fortunate enough to um, to receive it from them. Um, but I, I was always taught to build up my credit score and, um, invest. So, <clears throat> so paying off, my, paying off all my debt kind of ran, ran counter to sure. what I, what I had been taught like my entire life. Um, so, I mean, they're definitely supportive of, of me and, Oh, they love you. They yeah. want you to win, but yeah. they think you're a little weird. Yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, that's okay. That, that's kind of how I knew it was working is like my friends thought I was weird. Um, everybody, you know, kind of thought I was doing something different. So, um, that, that let me know that I was right on track. That does give you energy. It really does. If your broke friends are making fun of your financial plan, <laughs> it means you got a good one. Yeah, that's good. Very good. Very cool. Good job, man. Well done, well done, well done. What a great life you've mapped out for yourself. Thank you. Well, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. It comes out next week, but we'll give you an advanced copy today uh, because that's definitely you and Madison's next chapter uh, is to get on the business of uh, building some wealth and being outrageously generous as you go along. So, and you're definitely, definitely in a position to do that. Thank so, you. Very, very cool. Very well done. Also, a copy of the Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody and disrupt their lives. It disrupted yours and uh, get you started. And that, that's exactly right. If anybody asks what you did, you just hand them that and say, this is what I did right here. That's what I did right there. So uh, very cool. I want to hear from you when you're a Baby Steps Millionaire, too. Yes, sir. You'll be on your way. Absolutely. Very good stuff. All right. It's Vincent from Chicago, Illinois. $91,000 paid off in 27 months, making 25 to 100. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free. Yeah. (laughs) That's how it's done right there, man. That's exactly what we do around here. That's pretty cool. So it doesn't matter if you're 26, you're 36, or you're 46. That's what you do. Or 56 or 66. It doesn't matter. Just put, a, put a, whatever decade you want to put in there. This is doable. It's very doable. He did this in 27 months. He was making no money. Got his first job with his master's in accounting. Got his CPA and added to that substantial income by delivering Uber Eats and pizzas. Then he's done. Did he, did he deliver pizzas the rest of his life? Did he work Uber Eats the rest of his life? No. He did it for 27 months. Not even, really. Probably 24 months. But the whole journey was 27 months long. 
So this, what this, what this guy is telling you, what Vincent's life is telling you, it's speaking to you right now when you're listening to this, when you're looking at this on YouTube, it's speaking to you very clearly. You know what it's telling you? Vincent's life is telling you, you can do this. You can do this. And it's worth doing. It's worth the trouble. And you need to get about the business of being a grown-up. It's past time for you to get about the business of being a grown-up. Yeah, I'm talking to you. This is The Ramsey Show. for joining us america we're glad you're here this is the ramsey show common sense for your dollars and cents for that matter for your life common sense is so rare in america today when you've got it it's like having a superpower john is in atlanta hi john welcome to the ramsey show hey there dave how are you better than i deserve what's up not much um my wife and i are in baby step two uh we have about one hundred and fifty three thousand in debt um we are toying with the idea of potentially selling our home in order to become debt free wow the 153 count the house no it does not what's that on there's about a, there's about 235 on the house okay how much what's the 253 on the the 153 yes i'm sorry most mostly student loans how much are student loans no, I don't have it exactly. How much is a car? Right in front of me. Uh, 27. How much is the boat? No boat. Okay. Um, what else is in there besides a car and a student loan? That's about it. We paid off our, all of our credit cards are gone. Gotcha. What's your household income? Uh, we paid off about two, we paid off about 25,000 last year. Good for you. What's your household income? Uh, around 130. Okay, good. Okay. What's the house worth? I haven't had an appraisal on it, um, but trending in that area, uh, that house would probably go for around 400. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do you like the house? We like the house, but it's not a... I think we're both at the point now where renting an apartment for a year or two doesn't sound like such a bad idea. Um, 100% debt-free. 9 and 11, yeah. Yeah. 100% debt-free sounds awfully fun. Yeah, it does. (laughs) Uh Okay. And you've been working on this for a year? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. This question often comes up when people first start, and if it's when you first start, I will tell you to try it for a year and see how it goes and see what you can come up with because selling a house is very expensive emotionally, financially. It tears up your time. It it takes a chunk out of your year. You know, there's just a – it's not as simple as, uh, you know, taking taking a pair of jeans back to the store that didn't fit. I mean, it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It, 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 it's, why, it's, 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 calling you. yeah, it's taxing on you. And that's why I, it's the last thing I tell people to do is to sell their house. And if you told me you didn't like it, that would help, you know, but all you're saying is it's an okay house, but we're at the point that we, we can see that this is going to take us, you know, this is going to take us three hard years, almost maybe even a little bit more, or we can give up this house and be done with this. 
Right. And this is the trade-off. Yeah. There's not a wrong answer, John. It's It would be a matter of uh, personal preference. Uh, what would Sharon and I do? If we were ambivalent about the house, meaning we were kind of in the middle, we don't care one way or the other, we'd probably sell it. Because we would we would relish the... Now that we know what it feels like to be debt-free, we would relish that idea more than we would home ownership for the next... Because in one year, you can save up a down payment and start the process again, right? Right. Yeah, so go live in an apartment for one year with everything paid for, tight budget, build you up a nice emergency fund, a nice down payment, and then go buy you a house on a 15-year fix where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. And so you're one year out of the housing market. You're taking advantage of this white-hot market right now. Uh, one year or 18 months from today, it will have calmed down from where it is now. Somewhat. I don't know how much, but it will have calmed down. It's not going to get worse. Uh, it's crazy out there right now. So um, great time to sell. Uh, that's another reason to think about it. So, yeah, we probably would. But if you guys talk about it tonight and you go, you know, we just really go, we're we're going to gut it out. We're going to fight through this for three years and knock this debt out and keep this house. That's not a that's not a wrong answer. Okay. Because there's nothing here that's demanding that you do this. It's a matter of it. You are making the choice between making a move, apartment for a year, buying another house. Uh, 18 months later, uh, give or take, and you're making that choice between that and being debt-free today or fighting for three years. That, that, that It's just the trade-off of that. And that both of those are things that give you a good outcome five years from now. Five years from now, with either way you go, you're going to be in great shape. Got it. So just make the choice which way you want to play this. But I probably wouldn't – it wouldn't – I don't own any houses I'm that tied to. Uh, I like real estate, but there's stinking house on every corner, so I just don't get all jacked up about houses. Um, so I probably I, I, I'm out of there because houses to me are just commodity. I don't I don't get a lot of emotion about them. But um, but but Sharon, Sharon might argue with me on that. So and then I might let her win because she does often. <laughs> Jenna is with us. Jenna's in Pullman. Whoa, whoa, I hit the wrong button now. Jenna's in Pullman, Washington. Hi, Jenna. How are you? I, I'm doing all right. Snow has my kids all home today. so Cool. Me too. Peaceful, but... <laughs> yeah, me too. All my um, kids are home today. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Uh, so when I was in high school, I sold animals at the fair through 4-H mm -hmm. and my fifth grade teacher told me that I should invest some of it. I did not understand what wise, wonderful that advice was until I was an adult and took SDU. Now my 12 year old son sold an animal at the fair this year, got a big check and we were talking about what to do with it. And he says, investing sounds like fun or sounds interesting. How much so did he get? I, I'd love uh, he got like a thousand dollars. Okay. And we already have some set in savings. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, how can we teach him? I, I'd like to let him invest even just a little bit, mm -hmm. so he can learn about it. And mm -hmm. he's he's my oldest. He's very responsible. He's my mm -hmm. big saver. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he got a thousand from this check, but he has like eight hundred dollars saved up from past years just because he doesn't spend. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that and that was like his spending money. He's saving. He's not really spending it. So. Okay. I, I'd like to teach him about, but I don't want to make him into like a little day trader. No, no, um, no, no, no. We're not doing that. So how can I safely? Well, the downside, the downside is it, is that it's pretty boring. To do it okay. right, the proper way to teach him is to put the money in mutual funds and let him just watch the mutual fund. Mm -hmm. It's pretty boring. Uh, it's not because it's not day trading. It's not single stocks, and we're not studying companies, and we're not. I don't want to teach him that. I don't want him doing that. I don't want him thinking that's the right way to do it. So I'm not going to model that. Um, and so if well, you want to do it, I would just sit down with a smart investor pro and pick a mutual fund and put it in there. And then once a month, sit down and go over the mutual fund statement with him, not once a day, once a month and say, okay, here's the number of shares you have. And here's the share price. Multiply those two and you know what your account is now worth. And this is okay. how this works. And here's how the, here's the you can review the stocks that are inside the mutual fund, and look at those companies if you want to. 
uh, and, and, you know, learn about how a mutual fund works and learn about the actual paperwork of opening up the mutual fund. And, and, and but it's really not, there's a lot, a lot of activity once you get it open. It's just kind of tracking it. Um, Do I keep him away from people like my, like his grandfather who does a lot of single stock? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not trying to teach him to do that. Listen, why teach him to do something you don't think is a good idea? You know, I I didn't. I didn't teach my kids how to do single stocks. I taught them how to do mutual funds. Now, in my case, what I did, the way I taught them, was that they just tracked their college fund that I was funding. They didn't put their money in mutual funds until they were adults. Uh, But they knew how mutual funds worked because we sat and had the little nerd conversation at the table with my money that I was doing. And so if they rolled their eyes and were bored, it wasn't the end of the world. But it's not a real active process. Real investing is not. That, you know, in speculating, gambling is an active process. And I wouldn't teach him that. Hey guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where dad is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Thank you for joining us, America. We're glad you're here. It's Common Sense for your work, your life, your money, and your relationships. It's what we talk about here every day. Nettie is with us in Mesa, Arizona to start off this hour. Hi, Nettie. How are you? Ah, I pushed the wrong button. Oh, I'm, lo- I'm losing it. There you are, Nettie. How are you, Nettie? Yeah. Hi, I'm doing good. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, I, I, uh, I'm on baby set number five mm-hmm. and we've, I, my wife and I read your book. We have two kids. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we are just kind of stuck in the college fund. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, we believe, and I know there's studies showing like, you know, oftentimes kids that just get handed, you know, their, you know, money or just pay for stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of times it ends up hurting them more because they get a freebie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, I didn't, I, reading your book, I didn't really feel like I got a clear direction of why to, to have a college fund. I just, I just, you know, why we would, uh, why we would look for a college fund for it. So just having them pay okay. for it. So you're off. saying you would yeah. prefer that they're, that, that not to furnish any money for your kids' college and for them to pay for their own because you're afraid you're, that when kids are handed money, you're going to ruin them. Eventually, I'd like to have them something to you know, when, when inheritance, but I don't want to give it to them right when they get out of high school or, you know, or something. I want them to, to work for, for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How old are your kids? And then one's uh, six months. Uh, I'm sorry, your phone broke up. Six months and what? Two years. Two years. Okay. All right. Just a little. Well, there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. If you want to go that route, I've got a friend who is a professional football player, and uh, he his school is paid for because he went to college on a football scholarship, and he's a you know he grew up in a real hardcore blue collar household, and he had to work for everything, and he said his kids are going to have to work or they're going to get a scholarship, they're going to have to figure it out. He'll help them, show them how to do it, but he's not giving them a dime, and um, mm-hmm. he's real hardcore on that. And if you want to be that, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the vast majority of people that we work with want to help fund their kids college one way or the other the uh, and that's why the baby step is there we did fund our kids college and uh we did not ruin our children in the process uh Great. so the yeah. uh you know the the, the sub the, i think that the 
you know, the thing I would think on from a parenting standpoint, and I'm not arguing with you, you're welcome to do what you're talking about. There's nothing yeah. wrong with what you're talking about, okay? But the mm-hmm. reason that I went a different direction was I discovered yeah. that my children turning out to have a work ethic and have integrity and have character uh, didn't have as much to do with how much money I gave them as how I made them behave. Yeah, it's true. And so my kids know how to, knew how to work before they went to college. Work ethic was required in our household. I'm a hard-working guy, and I believe in hard work. The harder I work, the luckier I get, you know, and that kind of stuff. I, I'm that guy, you know. So uh, our kids had jobs. They had jobs at the house. They had chores they had to do. They got paid for the chores, some of them. Some of them they did just because you love your mother. Shut up, and you help your mother, right? And yeah. so we, we yeah. did some of that, and we mixed it up. And, and so and, and they're getting help for college was contingent upon on them behaving if they weren't going to behave uh correctly then you know you're not gonna be out here playing beer pong and uh you know sleeping around all over the place and you know this is not a chance for you to try to show out all the stupid human tricks in one four-year period of time me fund it you know so we're not doing that either so the, the the gift for college was contingent upon that but by the time they got to college, it was not really a probability they were going to do that because we'd already handled those behavior issues long before college. Um, those people that show out usually weren't taught to behave long before college or they were clamped down on so hard. It was the first time they ever were allowed to have their own thoughts uh, and they blow up at college, one of the two. So, uh, you know, that's just kind of a parenting discussion we can have. But but at the end of that discussion, if you still say, hey, I'm not giving them a dime. The little turkeys are going to work for it. I'm not going to be mad about that. Uh, I will challenge you that it's a big bill and you need to show them a method to get to be able to pay for it. Teach them entrepreneurial skills so they can start their own, run their own business while they're in school, make good money, not be flopping whoppers and hope they can get through school. Uh, teach them about selecting an inexpensive school. Uh, because they're not going to have much money to go to school with. Uh, teach them about getting scholarships. Teach them about getting good grades to get good scholarships and being good citizens to get good scholarships. And teach them some of the methodology, like we have in the Ramsey book, debt-free degree. Uh, you should coach them if you're not, especially if you're not going to give them money. But there's no moral requirement that says you have to pay for your children's college or you're a bad parent. Uh, And on the other hand, if you do pay for your kid's college, it doesn't say you're necessarily a bad parent either, that somehow you allowed them to be trust fund babies with no sense of dignity, identity, or personal responsibility. Those things should be taught independent of money. The money then should, the way they handle money should be the result of the character you grow in them as a dad and as a mom. Really good discussion, man. Thank you for calling in with that. Uh, Marisol is with us in Augusta, Georgia. Is it Marisol? Did I say that right? Marisol? Yes. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. How can I help? Hey, um, I just have uh, maybe one or two questions. So um, a little bit about the story. Um, I can save this year, 2022, about um, 20 grand. Good. Because right now I don't have um, nothing in my savings. I had $5,000, but I used it to pay my mom's surgery a couple of weeks back. Mm Mm-hmm. Because um, right now, I'm basically the breadwinner in my household. Mm-hmm. I mean, my stepfather has a job, but I make more than he does. So he covers most of the um, bills in the house, and I cover basically the medical bills for my mom and my um, dad. It's really stressful because... Um, How old are you? I'm 25, about to be 25. What do you make? Day. I make about 48 What do you do? A year. I'm a diesel mechanic. Okay. Why don't you get out on your own? Let everybody else run their own oh. life. Like go on my, like on my own, let them leave. Yeah, my like family? go get you an apartment and run your own life and quit taking care of everybody else and everybody else taking care of you. Well, um, I used to live by myself and I got involved in some pretty bad stuff and financially everything went down. So I went back to my mom's house and she doesn't ask for anything. I just go ahead and pay. Yeah. For her medical bills. Are you healed from the, are you healed from dealing with bad stuff? 
Um, yeah, I'm healed. It was I was involved in crazy stuff, like bad stuff, like growing. Yeah, so don't do bad stuff and go get on your own. That's what I would do. Hang on, I'm gonna send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover to show you what you do, what the, what you do with the money while you're doing that. If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. America. This is the Ramsey Show. One week from today, Thursday, January the 13th, we will be in the middle of book launch week for the new book, Baby Steps Millionaire. And we're going to do our free live stream event called Building Wealth in 2022. In-person tickets are sold out. Over 1,500 people registered in the first few days that we put the in-person live event up for sale. Uh, the good news is you can watch this as a live stream, and we're not going to charge you a dime. Over 60,000 people are already registered to watch the live stream. Rachel Cruz, George Camel, and I are going to talk about how to build wealth this year. Not only about what's going on in the real world, and we'll discuss stuff like crypto and NFTs, and we'll discuss the things that are going on in the investment world. There's a real get-rich-quick thing vibe moving around in America today, and we're going to discuss it in a way that's understandable without having to call any by names. And then as a result of doing it, we will get called names. <laughs> Welcome to social media. But hey, we're looking forward to this. Exactly one week from today, Building Wealth in 2022 is a free live stream, one night only event. Thursday, January 13th. Join the thousands who have already registered for free by going to RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. And you can register, RamseySolutions.com slash wealth. And we are in the last few days of your ability to buy the Baby Steps Millionaire's book for $20. It actually launches next week, and the $20 deal will be gone. Plus, you get all the goodies if you do it in the pre-order. So do the pre-order on it because you get the, the e-book and the audio book included. You get the uh, Legacy Journey ebook and audio book included. Um, you get uh, all kinds of other stuff. I mean, there's a whole pile of things. Just check it out at RamseySolutions.com. It's over $150 worth of items if you pre-order. So go ahead and pre-order the book this week. Get it this weekend. Let people know that they need to get it over the weekend. $20 is a deal. Uh, books have gone up because paper has gone up. And uh, our cost on the books have gone up. And other publishers, when we look at what they're doing, their costs have gone up. And that's the thing. That's the deal. So be sure and do all of this. RamseySolutions.com. Marco is in Los Angeles. Hi, Marco. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? All right. So um, just a quick um, history about me. I'm a 33-year-old male. I'm currently making about 125 on an annual salary. I have no debt except for a car payment and I'm currently I currently owe twenty six thousand on it. Um however my goal is to own a my goal is to become a homeowner. So my question is should I sell that vehicle and buy something in cash or should I pay, or should I finish paying off my car before I begin saving for a house? How much do you owe on the car? Twenty six thousand. You told me that I'm sorry. How much do you have in savings? Um about forty 40,000. Okay. All right. 
Um, what's the car? What kind of car? It's a Jeep, Jeep Gladiator. Mm, you like it? Uh, it's okay. Okay. Um, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes? I'm 33 years old. I make 125000 Got 40000 in the bank. I want to buy a house. I have a $26,000 car debt. I'd write a check as soon as you get off the phone. Jump online and pay the car off. That leaves you $14,000 and no car payment. I'd get on a tight budget. You got nobody to control but you. That's easy. Just decide to control you. And making 125000 I'd save a huge pile of money by this time next year for my down payment. And I'd buy a house next spring with a massive down payment. I bet you could save sixty or 80000 bucks if you really leaned into it. Mm-hmm. That's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. Aaliyah is in Trenton, New Jersey. Hi, Aaliyah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Hi, what's up? Um, so, a quick overview. I recently started following my dream of um, studying a master's in architecture in 2020. Good. Um, I'm about a quarter. Thank you. I'm about a quarter finished with it. Um, it's about twenty six thousand uh, dollars for a year. I do work full time, um, but more recently, I kind of started this kick with financial freedom and just kind of changing the tra- trajectory of my family lineage. Um, not to mention this year I'm in the process of donating my kidney to my mom. Um, Whoa. So my question, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess if you were in my shoes, what would you do? Um, I, I kind of have three options, call school and pay off my debt, then return once I'm done. I can also stretch out my program and pay as I go, or should I get like a certification in a related field, such as UX, um, to fund college once I'm debt free. What are you doing now? Option. What do you do now? Um, I'm currently a service rep. I'm sorry, a, ser- a service rep? Yeah, so essentially a junior uh, sales rep. Okay. Now you're you're studying architecture, but you're trying to get your master's yes, in architecture, and it's a four year program. It's a three year program, um, but because I work full time, I have to uh, study a bit at a slower rate than the typical person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what do you make a year? Sixty thousand dollars. Good for you. Okay. Hmm. I wonder what it, at what point in this process that you could join an architectural firm in a junior position that wasn't licensed. Yeah, I've been looking into that. Um, it's just a little difficult to get into it because it does require some experience. And um, my background is in business, so it's just a little challenging. Mm-hmm. Oh, it is challenging, no question. Everything in front of you is challenging, though. Oh yeah. You don't have it. You didn't have anything on your list that wasn't challenging. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, welcome to life, huh? But the uh, uh, yeah. uh How old are you? Twenty six. Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. The good news is is that you are thinking about doing all of the things you're considering doing on purpose instead of letting life happen to you. So I predict that you're going to be successful because if you keep doing that. That does lead you to success. Sometimes you have to go around the barn twice to get there, but it'll lead you there because you keep being, you keep thinking about the future. You keep thinking about where I want to end up and what are the steps to get there so that I end up there. You have a clear, what we call desired future, right? And the desired okay. future is, is that at the end of this, uh, the first, at the end of this chapter of the story, you are working as a master's degreed licensed architect. That's our goal. Agreed. Yes, sir. So then we have to ask ourselves, what is the shortest, most efficient process to get there? Which is kind of what you're asking me. Um, Okay. It occurs to me, even if you took a pay cut, if you could get on, even if you're doing the business aspects of an architectural firm for an architectural firm, for instance, if you were helping them in business development, meaning you were helping them get new clients, kind of like you do now, but you did it for an architectural firm, that they might be willing to pay for your education while you're working okay. there. 
I mean, if you made $50,000 a year and they paid for your education, we got a net increase, agree? Yes, sir. I just made that up. I don't know where that job exists, but I know it exists somewhere. I just don't know where and what you got to go through to get there. Now, uh, the kidney process, you also got to kind of factor that thing in. What's the recovery time on that, the downtime? Uh, Because you don't want to take a new job and then be out for six weeks. That doesn't work, right? Right. Correct. So you kind of got to think that through. Uh, But I I think if you're careful, you probably can figure out a way to get this degree without any additional debt working. And you may or may not start parts of that before or after the kidney donation, which is an unbelievably wonderfully charitable thing to do. says a lot about your character the good things about your character. So, yeah, that's probably what I would do. Let me send you a couple of Ken Coleman's books to help you with this. The Proximity Principle is kind of what I've got in mind while I'm talking about this, but also send you Paycheck to Purpose, which is what the process is. Get that clear path going that he lays out for you. Welcome to the Ramsey Show, America. We're glad you're here. Dovey and Kaya are with us in Baltimore. Hi, guys. How are you? We're good. How are you? Better than I deserve. I see on my screen you're debt-free. Congratulations. How much did you pay off? Thank you. Um, We paid off $140,000. All right. How long did this take? Um, It took... Exactly 16 months. 16 months and your range of income during that 16 months so we started out at one hundred thousand dollars um together and then landed on two hundred one thousand dollars and seven hundred thirty six your income went up one hundred thousand dollars in 16 months not bad I'd say so, too. Yeah. So what caused that income to go up like that? Well, um, so I started working seven jobs, and my wife picked up another job for a total of nine jobs between the two of us. Oh, my gosh. Um, so for, Yeah. So for the six months, um, every single day of the six months, I was working, and my wife was working most of the days as well. Wow. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. Go, 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 go. What kind of debt was the hundred and forty thousand? Um, so primarily student loans, and about two thousand of it was in musical instruments. Okay. Oh wow, very cool. What do y'all do for a living with your main jobs? Um, so I am a physician assistant, mm-hmm. um, and Dovi is a paramedic, and. Uh, COVID uh, site manager. Yeah, I run a COVID uh, testing center, and uh, I I also decided to to take you up on your uh, your advice and uh, sell everything but but the kids. So I started a business just selling things on eBay on Facebook. All right, what what is your most profitable? Uh, what's your best side gig, Dovey? My best side gig would probably be um, selling stuff on. On Facebook and eBay and stuff like that, I've sold watches, I've sold cars, people wanting to get rid of them from houses. Um, you know, like their grandparents passed away, I, I take a commission off of that, and I'm just selling stuff like that. Wow. Cool. Good for you, man. You've been getting after it. So, uh, how long yep. have you guys been married? Uh, eight years, I think, now. Almost okay. nine years. So, what happened 16 months ago that lit you on fire? Because you guys are burning bright. Um, so 16 months ago, we, uh, we started, uh, we, we've been Dave ish for maybe five years, but, uh, 16 months ago, we decided that we were really sick and tired of being sick and tired and having too much a month at the end of the money. So, um, so we decided that we would get completely, uh, completely Dave and just go, uh, be, be gazelle intense. We listened to, 
um, total money makeover. We were driving up to visit friends in New York. We we we, uh, we listened to total money makeover the whole way up and then the whole way down. Finished it, and from there we just uh, we were gazelle intense beans and rice. No internet, no TV. Is that what flipped the switch? Just the audio book kind of rubbed it in your face? Um, well, that and for a while, the reason we were Dave-ish is because we couldn't imagine how I would get through PA school without loans um, at that point. And then my first job was something that would qualify me for loan forgiveness. Um, and for a while, I was kind of stuck on the idea of that being a good idea. And then we actually, like you say to do, sat down and did the math on an Excel spreadsheet and kind of figured out that with me staying there to try to get loan forgiveness, we would end up losing on um, a lot of money that we could potentially make if I changed jobs to something that paid more and that allowed um, Dovey to work more. Yeah, and the net result is you make more money net of the forgiveness even. Yeah, that's good. Good. Very good. Mm -hmm. Way to go, you guys. Way to go. How's it feel to be free? It's awesome. It's really, really great. I mean, it just feels like there's so much extra, and, you know, we can just give it away. You guys have been busting it. I mean, you got to be a little tired. Very tired. <laughs> we're, we're towards the end of 3B right now, so we're, we're going to slow down in a little bit, but we're still, we're, we're still running. All right. Way to go, guys. Way to go, way to go. Who was your biggest cheerleader outside the two of you? Somebody outside looking at you going, go, 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 go? So initially, not really. It was it was pretty rough at, when we started because everybody was kind of hating on us. But um, but then we we got in, into an FPU class and our FPU uh, 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 guides were were very very much our, our cheerleaders and they're good friends of ours. Um, and they even advised us to start our own FPU class. We we ran an FPU class. They were like, if you guys if you if you start if you lead an FPU class, I guarantee you you'll get out of debt. Yeah. Before you finish the FU class, and they were right. Yeah. They gave me the, gave both of us the, uh, the, the, the energy to just, you know, get the rest of it paid off really, really quickly. Well, there's something about um, being really in the middle FPU of it class. every time, every week. You're in the middle of it with other people that just fires you back up exactly. and keeps you going. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and it was nice to have the community. Like it was also local, so even though it was online, the class we attended initially was all kind of people from the community who we became friends with, and mm -hmm. so it was nice to kind of be in the same boat with with other people who weren't, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, and were also kind of using the same old lunchbox or whatever to help kind of like not feel bad about it. Driving a '91 car. There you go. That's a badge of courage right there, isn't it? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Just as a temporary thing, you drive like no one else later, you can drive like no one else. This is what you've been doing. You work like no one else, exactly. you have been. You, now you can work like no one else. You don't have any payments anywhere. Way to go, guys. This is excellent. Thank you. So proud of you guys. So what are you telling people now? You're in the financial peace class. You guys have been busting it. You pay off 140000 in 16 months. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Um, definitely getting on the same page with your spouse. I know that's one that's said often, but it really does require that, that team effort, that community just within the marriage. Um, and you know, for anyone who's not in a marriage, having a partner or a friend, like essentially having that community, having that support, because it can be really easy to falter. There's so much media, there's so many advertisements, like everything trying to tell you not to do what Dave says to do. So to have those people around, um, I think is a really big deal. Um, and also to recognize that, you know, if the math doesn't make sense, that, yeah, you've got to work more and you've got to spend less and you just got to get used to that idea. Wow. Powerful. Good for you. Well, you're right. Financial Peace University sets you up in that community where you've got the accountability, you've got the encouragement, and you've got other people modeling and doing it right there with you. It's not like you're by yourself then. 
uh, that you you got to have some people around you cheering you on, pushing you, uh, pulling you, whatever it takes. And that's just, it's necessary. So, so proud of you guys. Very well done. You're heroes. Great job. <laughs> we got a copy of the Baby Thank Steps you. Millionaires book for you. We're going to send it to you. It comes out next week and we'll send it to you then. And uh, so you'll get a copy, a brand new copy of that because that's the next chapter in your story for sure. You're going to be Baby Steps Millionaires. And then I'll we'll also send you a copy of the Total Money Makeover, which is, uh, you know, the audio books, what got you guys fired up so you can give that hardback book away to someone, maybe uh, disrupt their world, get them off of ish and get them moving. I'm proud of you guys. Well done. Amazing, thank you. So thank you. 140000 paid off in 16 months, making 100 to 200. Oh, man. Dovey and Kia in Baltimore, Maryland. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt free! Yeah! yeah! Let the next chapter begin, baby. Woo! That's how you do it. Man, that couple's been working. Wow. Impressive. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Wow, that seems to apply to our last caller, doesn't it? Guy was working seven jobs. Most people get ahead during the time that others waste. Henry Ford. I like that. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Elizabeth is with us. Elizabeth is in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up in your world? Good. Um, So I am on board with becoming a millionaire. That sounds fantastic. Good. Um, But the issue with that is losing it all. Um, My father worked very hard to become a millionaire, and uh, he suddenly passed away a couple years ago, about five years ago. And um, right around the same time, my mom was diagnosed with uh, early onset dementia. Oh, my. And, yeah, it was rough. How old Um, old is your mom now? She is 66, so she was 62 when she got diagnosed, but... I mean, the science had been there for years. Yeah. I had I had mentioned it. It's just it's really hard to get. So your dad, your dad adult. was your dad was like sixty years old when he passed. He was sixty two. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um. Thank you. Yeah. Um. So it, it, there was a silver lining in that, which is um, all of his assets. It, it's sad, but. Pretty much most of his assets have gone towards care for my mom. Um, and it, to be honest, it's it's not enough. A million dollars is not enough to pay for early onset dementia care. Um, even in assisted living, if, if you're frugal about it and you don't, really don't want to be frugal about it, um, it's a lot of money. And doing the quick math, um, if there's only a 3% increase each year on the rent, which it's been five, for my mom, um, if I were to go through the same thing, my husband would basically have to pay either four million dollars out of pocket if I were to live for about twenty years, which is what we're projecting for my mom, or he'd have to live on two thousand dollars a month and have absolutely no assets. He couldn't have a house or a car. Um, 
and long-term care insurance only pays for six years of care. Mm -hmm. So financially, I don't know what to do in order to make sure my husband's taken care of because there's always Medicaid for if that happens to me, but what about him? Yeah. I'm so sorry for what you've been through. Um, and your reaction is a, uh, of great concern about this it is a normal reaction. Um, but the statistics don't back up your fears, which is mm-hmm. good news. Um, I'm hoping, yes. Yeah, I'm I know, they, they really don't. Um, the number, yeah. the number of early onsets that live 20 years is there's not any. They don't, you know, there's mm-hmm. very, very few early onsets live 20 years. Um, it's, it's been, it's been pretty, it's been five years and I know, she's, she's I know. pretty healthy. I know. <laughs> so we, had, we had an early, we have had early onsets in our family and I, yeah. well, I've walked through it and just, I mean, do a little bit of research, not just with your mom's situation, but with overall. Mm-hmm. And let's not even talk about your mom. I'm not trying to wish you know, a short longevity on her. No. That's not what I'm saying. No, I know. I'm not that indelicate, but, um, uh, <laughs> but the, but, but here's the thing. The, the point is, is that the set of assumptions you're using, uh, mm-hmm. are statistically so unlikely. The probability is so unlikely that you're using on you, that your husband ends up this way that I, I um, mm-hmm. I, I think I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to worry about it. I think you guys go about the business of building wealth and plan on getting your six-year long-term care, and you're correct about that. Um, and <clears throat> at, at 60 years old is when I would buy it. Um, and um, even, even though she had symptoms, because we could not, I, we could not get her long-term yeah. care insurance because I understand the doctors are already noticed. Yeah, yeah. I understand. But again, that's so unusual. Statistically, yeah. the number of people that use long-term care insurance prior to 60 is so statistically insignificant that it's just, I wouldn't do it. If you want to buy it at 55 because of your fears, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But you're going to pay, you know, 3000 bucks a year for five years for a 0.0001% chance is what you're doing. And, um, mm-hmm. and it's okay to do that, but, but you just need to, let's not... Um, it, it, it's, it's, you should hurt and you should grieve with what you've been through. And I'm sorry you're hurting and grieving. I, I don't want that for you, but I also don't want that to make your decision. I want you to use facts, not all of the hurt and the feelings to make your decisions with on this. And, and I am being indelicate and telling you you're doing that right now. So don't. Yeah. Um, no. And, and what you're doing is a it. human reaction, and it, it means you're a good daughter and a good person, and it doesn't mean you're uh, you're an illogical person or something like that. It, it's a normal thing. But I'm not in the trees with you, so I can see the forest. So here's the thing: I, I, I would buy long-term care insurance if you want to buy it a few years early, 57 even. Go ahead. I really wouldn't do it at 55, okay. and, and I really would just get about the business of building wealth. And I wouldn't try to do this. And then the uh, the other thing I would do is I would continue to learn the care systems that are available um, mm-hmm. to someone and, and how you might do this more economically than maybe you started out thinking it was going to cost. Um, there's a lot of different care out there, a lot of different types of care, a lot of different ways to get at this and, and um uh, even in home care. So let me give you an example. Okay. Our net worth is, um, large enough that if it was $4 million, it really wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, but we wouldn't end up spending $4 million on it at our house because we would, because for less than $4 million, I can, I can hire a full-time nurse and set up a full medical ward inside my house and take care of someone, have someone taken care of, you know, for instance, if that happened to my wife, okay. Uh, or if it happened to me, she could do that. And so there's, there's other ways to, for your husband to deal with this. If that comes up, I'm not suggesting you change your mom's care plan that you have. Um, uh, and I'm, and I'm not suggesting this is cheap. It's not cheap, but, um, but, but, uh, the numbers you're giving aren't, are so unlikely that the 
hopelessness that goes with your scenario is not necessary. You, there's great hope in your scenario. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fair to over plan and it's fair to, um, uh, you know, have some extra padding because you might have this probability because your dad passed early and your mom did get early onset, uh, that it, it just, it just, it, it, because of that history, you're just going to be super careful and that's okay. And, 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 and that's part of personal financial it's got personal in it. So, hey, thank you for your call. Again, I'm just so sorry for all the stuff you guys have gone through and, and all the hurt that's been there for you because you obviously loved your mom and dad both and uh, do love them. And and it's there's early early onset is just a – man, it's just a beast of a – it's just not fair. It, it's like uh, – because we don't know how far it goes. We don't know how long it lasts. It's pretty crazy. So, um, but I think we can do some statistical analysis on probabilities and it's a cold way of looking at it, but you know, that this is what you, you got to do this because this is how you figure out your insurance plans, how you figure out those kinds of things. And believe me, the insurance companies are doing these analysis. So we might as well be in on the math as you and I, America are planning out our old age and not losing all the wealth we worked our whole lives for which is what she's concerned about and that's a it's a fair concern that puts this hour of the ramsey show in the books our thanks to james Charles and kelly daniel in the booth i am dave ramsey your host we'll be back with you before you know it in the meantime remember there's ultimately only one way to financial peace and that's to walk daily with the prince of peace christ jesus It's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. 